we're looking at the Helena slump. I'm just, uh, they're concerned that this might slide into the Pacific and cause a tsunami. Oh, God, it will. I can't wait. I don't mean that in a thing way, but it, I mean, they only happen like every, like, what, 10,000 years or something, argumentably? So, uh, and, and it will, it will probably cause, last time it happened, According to their conventional theories, they sent, they found. I know this is weird that I remember this, but it was so crazy. Basically, it was there was a tidal wave that hit the side of Alaska on a cliff or something, and they can measure that the tidal wave that hit it was one thousand nine hundred and twenty feet tall. Welcome to the June seventeenth edition of the Electric View. I'm Neil Thompson. Today we have David, Robert, Buddy, and our special guest, Sean. We are going to be discussing how the EUT is taken by the masses, how this affects our cultural identity, and why it is such a hard pill to swallow. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. So, so Sean, uh, <laughs> what, what, I understand, what I understand is that, that uh, there, there was some uh, uh, dis- disagreement over positions of uh of, of the electric universe versus the versus the mainstream uh, uh view of physics and science etc that you and you ran into yeah i mean well first of all thanks thanks a lot for having me on because i talked to robert like by texting and we're generally from the same area pittsburgh pa area if you will right oh cool so there, was, there, there was a process for me obviously i'm 49 so there was a process for me to get to the electric universe in the first place Mm-hmm. So when, you know, uh, coming from, you know, the uh, circle of what they call African consciousness, African centered studies, there's a lot of I- alternative ideas also. Right. When it comes to right. man or just human, et cetera. But then, you know, what happens with people is, you know, they have these YouTube channels that are pretty popular, et cetera, and they want to kind of create their own theories and postulations to it, but then can kind of, just because of how things are, run wild with science and literally you know, putting together your own theories and hypothesis that if somebody steps to you and checks you, we call it, and acid tests you on the spot, you know, it, it's going to cause, uh, you know, conflict. It's going to cause, uh, tempers even. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yes. Which, which, which really goes back to if I found the electric universe, that means I was at some point in my life independently doing comparative studies and I had already, you know, myself broadened. Uh, the way I research and, and just look for answers, if you will, because I wasn't mm-hmm. satisfied with, you know, alternative answers to what, what whatever you we're talking about. It could be religion, it could be science, it could be origins of humans, etc. But yet, there, you know, within that uh, conscious community, they call it, there are several lect- lecturers, if you will, that, um, you know, present information on science, etc. And I step into the ring, I call it, and have been doing it for several years. Hold on a second, guys, I'm going to shut this uh, window. Wow. Sure. As you, as you guys hear a train going by. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first um, time. <laughs> yeah, nonetheless, uh, you know, I stepped into that ring. I was a part of that community for a long time and, you know, started doing research, took kind of a natural, a natural, holi- natural science holistic, uh, approach years ago, probably back in 06. Mm-hmm. Ramped it up in 2012 and was like, Hey, if anybody's going to say anything about anything, you better be ready for somebody to pretty much, like I said, acid test you on the spot. Just, just, just because we're, you know, people are already confused anyway. No matter what race you are, no matter culture you're from, people are confused about a lot of different things and, right, you know, may not take those necessary steps, um, when doing comparative studies in the first place. So yeah, the guy puts on a presentation and I was kind of playing devil's advocate, if you will. Sure, sure. And listen, you know, we, we watched the video, you know, I'm not too hard on the guy, but we listened to hours of him pretty much presenting his theory, you know, no cause and effect, just, you know, you can kind of run wild with it, how you feel. But I was just kind of, you know, checking them. And then, you know, and uh, electric universe theory is, uh, you know, pseudoscience or whatever, you know, because this guy, when people fact check on the internet, we know that they're going to try to debunk something as quickly as possible without even taking a second look at it. Mm-hmm. So my, my point is, okay, cool. We have a wiki rational. You know, when I'm presenting this information, uh, through other circles, we have wiki, wiki rational. Let's just, I don't need to show people what EUT is. Let's just go through the exercises themselves. Present what you're presenting. If you don't have a paper, you know, uh, well, I have plenty of papers from other people that people aren't even exposed to. Let's just, you know, 
put the information on the table. Let's ask it, you know, test and check everything right then and there. So it, it, it in itself, when people start to postulate, that means you can make up pretty much whatever you want to without proof. Right, right. It's an idea. You know, I can make it up. I can use science to kind of validate it. But then you're opening yourself up because, okay, what do you mean you're using science to validate what? Okay, now we're going to, again, go right back to it. You have a theory about, you know, and what it comes down to is this. African-Americans have a defense mechanism, if you will, of theories that would be the equal and opposite to white supremacist ideas. And we kind of know what we're talking about here. So, Like what, for instance? Well, meaning... The origins, I mean, we're, we're coming through slavery in the first place. So we've heard a lot of ideas about the inferiority of the black race and oh, they were swinging on, you know, just the stereotypes. Of right, right, right. And okay, we, I know that. Right, we've heard this stuff globally. So it's like, okay, well, then the, the, there's like a disjunctive inference, meaning, you know, if A is right, B is wrong. If A is wrong, B is right. So we created a B, which would be uh, an all in. In other words, okay, we look at archetypes. We see that there are archetypes all across the planet. Well, their theory would be for that to take place, that means Africans being the first and one of the oldest civilizations ever would have had to walk around the planet essentially to share the information. Does that make sense now? That all this information went global and it only would have specific uh, similarities because somebody had to have transported the information to another culture rather than, well, there's another alternative that the culture shared same experiences if you will so now you guys kind of follow mm -hmm. uh, right when I do right and it's a very it's a very deep and important when you look at that entire history going back as far as how we perceive like the present our picture right. of what that is is really important i i, I right. i'm often kind of pissed off some well i shouldn't say i'm pissed off but i'm somewhat stunned about how much people give a shit about certain things like that sometimes i mean in the sense that uh you know they'll they'll go and these people were white oh, yeah. you know and <laughs> right or you know if they you know and you think they'd be black you know but, but they're white or, or and i'm like well, but there's ancestry just one, in general just in general there's an <laughs> in, in general yeah. there's, a, there's in general there's ancestry though and we link in consciously to that archetype i think what you're bringing up is is, uh, is, is spot on so, and so what it ends up being is the, the, the alternative theory, I guess, from a portion of the African American community would be the hijack theory, I call it. It's the theory mm -hmm. that would have to use natural selection, it would have to use Darwinism. It's going to go right back to big bangs and it's literally going to take the out of Africa model and conjecture it to whereas, you know, African people then, uh, are 200,000 years old at least. And Europeans are about roughly 4,000 years old, if that makes sense. But then mm -hmm. what happens is it, it, it starts to break down. And it, and when it starts to break down, it's like, okay, guys, so we're just, we're here for 200,000 years. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, Egypt's flourishing. Now it's all black now. The picture is painted differently. We have people with afros, essentially. And they're walking around the planet. And there's no really ex explanation for diversity at this point or, you know, cause and effect at all. But somehow, um, everything was hijacked from Africa, essentially. And then the archetypes either were stolen, you know, and or, like I said, migrated a completely different way, which just opens up a can of worms of, yeah, well, we should be then if we want to come up with an alternative theory is question if we're not going to, you know, look at religious texts, if you will. And, okay, that's not true. Okay, fine. But we're not going to then look at the science models themselves and question the science models before we just grab it just so it fits into a, a theory that we'd like to believe that could be wrong based on the science being, you know, inaccurate in the first place. If that makes sense. Right. Guys. Like, OK, so there's a, you know, I mean, the, 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 the one the one that I don't get with that is if it's an idea, how do you steal that? one if you have an idea and, and it's again, through through through. Right. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's, and then, and then, and then it starts to be, you know, come, you're going to get into an argument of Freemasonry, um, shrine, yeah. and, and oh. then it's going to be, and then they, what much, happened with the Egyptians and then Moses and all that stuff. Right. Then it's going to be pitted against really, you know, Kabbalah and Talmud, but then people aren't yeah. really getting it anyway. So that's really interesting for me. It gets, it gets controversial fast, but I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. game. I'm totally game. So, and, uh, you know, so I guess. 
when I, you know, got through, because when I got to EUT in about, about 2014, I was doing secondary analysis at that point. Like, I had already done a bunch of, re- I got to the Electric Universe because I asked for it. Uh-huh. Like, comparing archetypes and, you know, hitting a, a crossroads where I was like, is there any possibility, looking at the planet, you know, looking at what we have, uh, you know, I'm from Western Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And, uh, at Robertson, Pittsburgh, you're talking about an elevation of 1200 feet. Right. Johnstown is higher up in the mountains to the west, about 60 or to the east, about 67 miles. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, around that. I can remember correctly. And I moved out of here. Uh, 97. We, we climbed to 4,000 feet, then we dropped to 1100. So our elevation is lower than Pittsburgh's. And then when you look at it from an airplane view, and it's like a small plane from like the Allegheny County, County Airport, we always talk about and, you know, take that little plane ride and you go up from the foothills, which is already 1200 feet up. You just, it, there's just a huge crater there. And I'm like, so what? I'm, I've never seen anything like this before. Are you kidding me? So we live in a crater that cuts through a mountain that's in the mountains that I can't, I, I don't have an explanation for except an impact event, but I can't even, this is an early nineties. I can't. Where in, uh, yeah, the Johnstown area is what you said, right? Johnstown is what? Okay. See where it says, whoa, whoa, whoa slow down. Go back. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna go, oh, Beaver. You're going. You have to go uh, east, east, yeah. east, east, west, Lebanon. You're gonna fall towards the land. Let's stop. You're too far now. Where? I think it's a little Carol further. Town. So you're real close. Homer City, Blacklick. You see that? Blairsville, Indiana, oh. Penns Run, John. John I think it's further. So, yeah, there it is, down south of the right, the bottom. Nope, of look the at Evansburg. Park, see Evansburg. Yeah. Evansburg, Beaverdale, Evansburg. We're right. Yeah, Johnstown. We're right in that. You're right. The Johnstown, right there, pal. You see them out right there, Johnstown, go up, Jennerstown, Ligonier. Uh, You're right there. Look at the mountain right there. Look at that huge mountain. And it's literally, when you zoom in, Johnstown's in a valley and it's just cut, you know, out of, out of just nowhere. Like, what did that? That's not from erosion, guys. And I'm like, oh, that's, I was younger. I was like, this is like 91. And I'm like, this is, I've never seen anything like this. You go over this mountain. And, you know, you go into a pit, basically, a crater that cuts through another mountain where the river just follows the natural path. And I'm like, you know, the Connemaw Gap, it's called, is the, I think they say the deepest river gorge, uh, east. Well, right there, even. Oh, just right that, that formation in the applications. It's like, what the heck is this stuff? So, you know, keeping that in mind, you know. Uh, I love again, how the vo- foliage, certain foliage will oh, stick to certain goodness. rocks. Sorry for interrupting. I just I love the way it's, yeah. Yeah, it's caramel just, pattern. Or so you know, these are these are personal experiences. So you know, taking a common sense approach after I went down the path of the alternative religions, if you will. Um, a friend of mine, I give him a shout out, Brian Betts. What we did was in '06 because I've moved around Philly, Pittsburgh, you know, uh, New Jersey. I'm in Jersey now. Cool. Actually. Oh, really? We, if I'm from Upper Saddle yeah. River in North Jersey. We, I'm, I'm real close to Philly, so if I walk to the bottom of my street, I can see Oh, man, yeah. my, my mother's in uh, West Chester. Beautiful. So, yeah. Beautiful down here. But we did we ran an experiment. We're like, we're in the mountains, and what we want to do is we're going to, if we didn't have calendars to tell us when to plant seeds, we how would we do it? We take the Benjamin Banner for approach, we call it. We're going to just go raw. We're going to chart the sun, move into the sun, we're gonna look at the course, you know, the uh, Zodiac. House, we yeah. the moon. Um, we're gonna, cause there's shadows that get cast in a valley. So you have to be uh-huh. very particular how you plant. So we ran an experiment to the point where we're like, okay, we're gonna charge the sun. Now we're gonna not use water. One summer said, we're just not gonna use water. We're gonna let the weeds grow and see what happens. Well, we found out real quick that cucumbers are gonna try to find the sun and they're gonna follow the same patterns that we talk about all the time. I mean, I thought there were snakes in the yard. And I'm like, is that a snake? No, it's a cucumber. <laughs> They're trying to fight and it's fine and it's fine and it's way. Fight. Yeah, we're gonna fight and and you know we had uh, the we have pictures up from the Ouroboros. Uh huh. You know, yeah. Snakes in general, they're gonna come up out the ground. They're gonna twist and turn to try to find the sun. And we're like, okay, very interesting. <laughs> back to hieroglyphics, back to twisted ropes, back to archetypes we see, back to trying to figure this stuff out. How did how did they do that with the sun? Common sense, yeah. And then we start to look and read and research more. Um. You know, I just went straight up. Electricity and Egyptian text. I got to a point where I'm looking at all this stuff and I'm like, is there any possibility? You know, knowing that, uh, and I'll just put it out there that Yahweh, I knew Yahweh used thunder and, and lightning powers throughout the scriptures, if you will. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so did Zeus. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, is this the same <laughs> Arguably stuff? Arguably the same stuff? guy. Yeah, is this the same stuff? <laughs> and blam. You got Jesus and, and too, by the way. I hate, I hate science, and I'm like, okay, let me, I didn't look at any videos either, mind you. So I'm going to look at this stuff here. There's an alternative oh, science this is before, this is, okay, this is just when you were just starting. Okay. Fast, fast forwarding and just taking everything in consideration. It's like, okay, guys, now we're, this is a, this isn't even a rabbit hole. This is secondary analysis. I can get through this pretty quickly because I, you know, I'm not going to watch videos. I'm going to look at the papers and, you know, like, oh, uh, yeah, it does make perfect sense because transition metals, you know, you can go on a periodic table. We can, uh, define yeah. charge through transition metals. We, I right. lived on top of it. So I'm like, yeah, we live on ore guys and they mined it and, um, you know, dug it up basically. And essentially we're pulling, you know, iron ore. How did it happen? Dirt. Interesting how yeah, it goes in veins. Dirt, right? and, you know, can we show what a simple battery is then and, you know, do it real simple? Like, yeah, charge. Yeah, we don't explain charge in the space sciences. We don't explain it in geology. And I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, here we go. Well, I need to relay this information, essentially. That's when right. you're going to run into a, you know, brick wall, you can call it, if you're trying to do it through social media. But it's beta testing anyway. Let me. I mean, this is what's happening. Is We're finding that there's an up, upwelling of this this new model, which you're pointing at, is happening. And we're pretty excited yeah. by it. But, but uh, you know, Neil, Neil is a, a, a bit of a veteran around the geology aspect of it. We're, we're connected with people who have been doing it for many years. So, so uh, you know. You're in the right place. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, I guess, and, and again, I, I don't like to get long winded, but then I guess my contention with. No, it's great. Because what I've done then too is you take the, just take all the mytho historical information. You can easily link it then to African myth tradition, West African myth tradition, but then the conundrum in, in the quagmire is the black identity crisis that comes with it because people are looking for answers in the past. And then want to be a part of the, the uh, Near East story and or the yeah. yeah and it's like okay take yourself out you gotta have can't got you know we talk about selective perceptions and bias I didn't yeah. I wasn't doing that at a point in time in my life I took myself out the middle of it and that way I'll be able to see things clear if I take myself out the middle of it so I'm looking at yourself and trying to put yourself in it figure it out that way take uh -huh. yourself out of the middle of it. Break it down, yeah. take things real simple, and it started with freaking vegetables of all things, and you know, and just looking and charting this, you know, charting this moving to the sun, then seeing fractal lines. Uh -huh. Obviously, okay, what's this? Let's look at the uh, Valley of the Kings. I see scarring. Right. I look at, let's look at the uh, Rocky Mountains. They're making the same patterns. The Nile River follows the same type of pattern. It's like, right. okay, wait a minute. Um, is there a possibility? Yes, electricity, but and it's like, oh, wow. This is a there's a big con there's a big controversy that the that. The yeah, there's a big controversy. Possibly, the entire model of electricity got hijacked as well too, because there's a, there's a model of mo there's a, there's there's clearly like how your heart works and how, how how that that's that that's actually a vortex action, you know, which which links into Berkman currents, by the way. But this this is that this is actually the, the, something that's coming up pretty strong these days too. Well, we're it's, it's a worthy conversation. We're noticing that they they do this. They they have. Uh, like they people were aware of this, like in 1920. Like for example, mm -hmm. there, what was it, Jim showed us, showed us that paper a couple little while ago. I'm not sure, and it was uh, showing here's the here's the stuff that they were talking about in 1920. Basically, like um, your, you know, like here is a uh, he, here is the charge potential, and it was all described, you know, between the sun and the earth and all this other stuff, because there's so many. You know, and th this was all calculated long ago, and it was just mm -hmm. know, back or discarded back or, or something. Yeah, I've seen it. That's that's nice. That's from the right. SDO. I mean, this yeah. this is this is just recent from the sun. They did this is a shot of the, from from the North Pole of the sun. Did any of you guys put that <laughs> this is together? this is fairly radical? What's that? Did any of you guys put that together? Meaning, when you go to the SDO, you can actually you know uh, clip it together with you know ranges of dates. And then it'll put the film uh -huh. together. Did any of you guys do that? Or, or right. Else? Wow. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. No. Oh, no. See, that's how it works. Like, when you go to the SDO, you can type in a range of dates from different views. You know, you have to know how the SDO works where we can get a north yeah. shot, if you will. And right. Then, and then you literally put a range of dates in. You can do it over years. And whatever you're looking at, it'll time lapse the film. That's, I think this goes over to 
look at the little clock. It goes over yeah. to the time that It's like 2012, 2011. Yeah, yeah. You put a range of yeah. dates in. And that, I mean, I yeah. go, to the, go to these sites, and it's like, hey, uh-huh. uh, this is how you do it, though, guys. You right. paste it together, and then this, then it comes out with this, and it's like, oh, shit, you know, wow. You but know this, is, really this, is totally, like? this is totally different. This is totally different than the, the, the model, the mainstream model. This, this, this blows the mainstream model actually out of the water. This, yeah. this SDO data. Well, if I was to right. look at this right here, and it, and it, 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 call me crazy for imagining this, but I see one circle going one way, then another circle going it's another rot- way, and yeah, another circle. Rotation. And well, it's, this it's a vor- is a fairly vortex action, just straight just out of like shower. Jupiter. Like there's little right. things, the same freaking thing, except of obviously yeah. much more higher, highly energetic. Well, it's that. I mean, it's a bigger time span, so it's it's, it's time lapse. But well, no, I meant but, I but, meant it's you know it's a bigger highly, yeah, is, you know. yeah. But but then you start looking at and and one of the things that Claridge is is you know working on, of course, but it's it's the circuits and then how do the circuits operate as far as and and all of a sudden the positions of the planets actually really really are important, you know, and then and then it brings astrology into the picture of what that was. As a as a as a general mapping, you know. it'd be so, so weird if we could eventually find the footprints of the planets on the sun, just like we find the footprints of the of the moons of Jupiter on Jupiter's aurora. Right, so, you know, right. That would be nice right. if you could see, you know, like this is generally where Jupiter is, as you can see it going around, and here are the hottest points of the sun, and you know, and I'm like, what? You know, that would be nice, but. Right. But uh, do you have the do you have the video uh, just so that uh, viewers will know what? Oh, of this video. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. what Sean was on. Uh, oh wow, the SEO. I, you know, I like the, Not I like that the I want to bash them, Garfield, but you know. Garfield Reed's a good dude, and you know he's uh, you know, even in with, with with people putting out information like this, they're actually still promoting uh, economic empowerment, if you will, in the urban core, um, entrepreneurship, education. Um, trade, you know, so the intention I would say is there and what people have to offer. It could be credit repair. You know what I mean? They're using right. the platform to serve a greater good, if you will. So I'm not too hard on the guys, but Garth oh, would allow no, me to I, I, I would, yeah, yeah, I, I, try me not to be too, I try not to yeah. be too bitter on people who, I mean, I have literally friends of mine who I'm friends with because, you know, we enjoy our scientific rigor, but you know, he will yeah. lambaste me over the EU, and then you can, it will go on. You know, challenging yeah. each other back and forth, and I bring up points, and I, and I, I kind of, you know, I, I, uh, I try not to, to judge because that would be like right. saying, "Hey, you're in a different paradigm." It's, it, it, it is, a, it is the same argument. You try to explain to someone that the world is round, or trying to explain that the Earth goes around the sun. You know, both, yep. none of that is intuitive unless you are taught it. Like, I mean, it's just right. not naturally. I mean, you. It, it, I mean, uh, I, what was it? Uh, uh, the philosopher uh, Wittgenstein. He said uh, someone came up to him and said, "Hey, the uh, what a bunch of idiots those people were thinking that the the sun went around the earth when we all know that the earth went around the sun." And he was like, "Well, yeah, but how would you know the difference?" <laughs> you, just, right. you just don't know until until you're like, oh, this theory makes so much more sense, you know. Like, yeah. and, you know, and you know, and that's the same thing that we're on to here. It's like, it, but there is a big problem that electricity is not intuitive to many people. It has certain rules, certain things that it does. I mean, it would help if you're into it, if every kid was exposed to it at the beginning, like like these pictures here, just for example, just, you know, okay, here's, because if I, I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at a positive negative tube, and you can see the different formations mm-hmm. that occur within the tube, and this is probably depending 100 on, years Depending old. on what's inside of it. Yep, exactly. And you can see, right, you can right. see the frequency response of it. And, I, you know, this is the... You know, one of one of the areas that that I'm, I'm taking these days a, a little a little bit off the track, but it's it's actually it uh, ties in really strongly with all the EU stuff. But it's studying Walter Russell and and he, you know, this mm-hmm. this image is like uh, very representative of what he's talking about. It's just the frequency aspect of everything, you know. Speaking and, of which, uh, buddy, I just I wanted to, or Dave, I wanted to point this out. See the CO two one. Uh-huh. 
Okay, so imagine that the sun is on one of those ends, and then you turn that and make it radial, like it goes around the sun in 3D. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember those rings I was telling you about? Those charge yeah. rings? We were looking at pictures of these, these rings of charge that were ex coming out of the Sapphire Project and so on. Mm -hmm. That's the same effect. Right, right. Just in a tube, of course. Yep, yep. But you see, if, yeah. if you turn it certain ways, and of course, if you turn it up, turn it down, or whatever. Anyway, right. uh, back to the topic. Of but you see, you see this, you know, the, Bar the Barkman, I'm sure you're probably familiar with uh, Christian Barkman, and as far as like him, him being kind of a cornerstone uh, researcher, as far as like the fundamental tenets of the electric universe, right? So oh, he's, it, we, we, we can, to be him. I mean, if we you can, think about him being alone. He was alone in Norway. He did the research by himself. He did everything. And this asshole from England named Sidney Chapman mm. tore a chunk out of the guy and just totally discredited him. But he, but this guy was rigorous. I mean, look at the stuff he built. I mean, before computers, before anything like that could ever even be thought of, he's trying to model these currents traveling from the sun to the earth. Well, that's... Right. That, and he built the model of the Earth, you know, and then showed like rings and the aurora. And, and you, you know, we see these those streamers going into the North Pole, North and South Pole of the Sun uh, now, <laughs> just like that. Uh, right. There's pictures of it. I'm sure that you, you could find if we looked hard enough. But uh, right. they, they they have to do it in steps because you have to because the sun is so damn bright. Right. So a, a nice one. A nice one is. I mean, that's a starting point, and it's a good one. It's just as far as if you're in, if you're in a debate with someone, it's like explain the auroras. That's always <laughs> a good start. Well, you know. they have. The, that's where Sidney Chapman decided to say, no, no, it's a, Earth has a self-contained magnetic field, just like a magnet, and the sun is just wiggling that magnet, and that's what causes the auroras. Nothing else. And for the longest time, until like friggin' the 1950s and something, that was the case. You know, it wasn't until then before we sent up satellites and they were like, uh, that's not what it looks like from here, you know, because that's the problem until we send a probe through it and you, you it's very hard to get a grip of what you're looking at. Uh, and that's it. We can, we're never going to send a probe out to Proxima Centauri. So we will have no idea the, 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 the voltage difference between here and there unless we can see something interacting that causes it. And we're, uh, the details are getting better and better as our instrumentation is getting better. Uh, and, of course, this is causing no end of confusion to NASA. There's something strange happening in the heliopause. There seems to be energetic interactions between, you know, like, you know, you're not, you just don't know, you don't, you don't think that there's power transferring across this that must transfer to get to the sun and to get back at the other ass end of it and continue on its merry way. You know, being the, the sun being a load, you think of the sun as just sending out something, uh, like generating internally from the magic power of gravitation. You know, so Eric Lerner right, oh, was really funny, nice James, to funny. him. Hey, it's funny. But Eric Lerner, by the way, the guy up in the upper right hand corner, was totally awesome. Um, when he was on that video, the Universe Cosmology Quest, talking about Kristen Berkman. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was just, I'm glad people did him justice, I guess, even though it took a hundred years. Right. Do we get, do we get Buddy on? I see his face. Now I'm a believer. Yes, you did. Yeah, happy Sunday. Happy Father's Day, buddy. Ha yeah. Happy Sunday. Yeah, happy Father's Day. Thank you. Happy Father's Day, guys. Yeah. I'm not a father. Don't we, have, we have we have we have Sean on today, and he's he, 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 he had a little bit of a, uh, a, a situation where people were scoffing at his support of the Electric Universe theory. So we're we're give, giving him a little at least at least a window into our insight into it. Yeah, I was gonna. I was asking Dave, could you find that video that I linked to you? Uh, which, uh, which one is it? Just so the the viewers, the the one that Sean was on, I sent you a. Uh, oh right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. That was it. Seti cocaine and homies. I and that's the part yeah, right there. Mean? There's you. <laughs> yeah, there's me. Right there's on. There you go. go. Yeah. You, you, there's not nothing going on. I just want people to know that they can go there to look for it, uh, and that way I can, you know, also make sure I'll make sure it's in the link at the bottom. And uh, 
the, the, the name of the face or the uh, YouTube channel is Dagger Squad. And, uh, you know, he's, he has some, you know, at least some formative videos, but nonetheless, he gets the views. He gets the right. viewership. So oh, science yeah. itself may not come up as much. It may be more, you know, we'll say mytho historical religious comparisons, but when science does come up, I like to stick my foot in if I can, you know. Yeah. Oh, by, yeah. by the way, now that, now that Buddy's on, because, I got, got got the approval. I think I think you'll like this. This might give might give you a little bit of, of ammunition. But uh, B- Buddy introduced me to uh, to Terrence Howard, and right. we're we're working together with him right now. So yes. uh, and it's on these Correct. on these series. So he's 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 a very strong support of uh, of, of of these ideas. So Can we show real quick too. I'm gonna I'm give Buddy a shout out because I showed my family the the video he made with the gnats. When he was changing the vibration in his uh in his voice. Oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah, man, I was like, yo, check this out, you guys. Look, look at this. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I mean, hey, here we go. Look at this, guys. You know, <laughs> do this. Look at buddy. Thank look you. Go. Um, you know, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, I anyway about the about the actual conversation that was happening. Uh, I recall just I've only I listened to about five minutes of it. And this guy, uh, who, who, whose name I do not know, he said, listen, I'm 51 years old and there's no, f- I don't have time to waste. I have kids to, th-. and it was just like freaking the hell out at you. Uh, it was very upset. I, I was, I was quite, I was quite, uh, he was emphatically upset, it seemed, <laughs> at the fact that you were actually talking about this, which I thought that was I mean, especially considering the fact that uh, you were being, you know, fairly open and polite about it. You weren't trying to jump down people's throats or, or proselytize or preach or anything, you know. So, yeah. I mean, another argument is one of the reasons they can't be they they haven't been detected really directly is is because of the counter rotation of the of the currents, you know. So so the the magnetic signature is 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 very difficult to detect. Without this model, you know, without, without without understanding the model, so. and that was the well, that's where, where uh, and, uh, Dr. Donald Scott had to actually model the forced force free current. You know, like it is, uh, and as Trevor was pointing out in one of the other shows, it's very, it's very efficient. And so it doesn't have the interactions that would normally lead to uh, things going into uh, glow mode or even, you know, dark mode. You know, we're only, we only, it's, it is transferring, uh, coming right out of the sunspots or whatever. And it's, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, high, high, it seems to be a lot of, a lot of solar wind is coming out of there, but there's, it was. It is. You can't. You can't see it. It is very efficiently traveled, which I thought that that across space, not not quite superconducting, because obviously there has to be resistance in there, but still, very obviously. I mean, it, it, that makes it hard to detect. I mean, really, it's it's almost impossible unless they start going into glow mode. Look at some of these butterfly nebula. You see this beautiful intricate detail going in closer to the to the load of the center star mm-hmm. so uh, sean as far as any, any questions are, are, are we are we going in a direction that is positive for you or would or, or oh would, absolutely i mean i keep are, and i think i may have mentioned this this is advanced information basically that and we're at the same table so you know even when i'm even uh, even on the internet i have to break this stuff down back to the basic level and talk about what is a cathode, what is an anode. You know, <laughs> yeah, you, know right. you gotta go back. We gotta take steps back. Uh, so I'm gonna yeah. actually plug somebody here. I'm gonna plug somebody. If you, if you can pull it up, that's fine, but I'm gonna plug them. What sure. I do still is I'm, I'm a DJ. So no matter okay. what I do, I incorporate music into it. Um, so we're gonna promote uh, healthy science, I'm gonna call it. A friend uh-huh. of mine, he has a business model. His name, He's a chemist. His name is Grand Hank. Uh, it's Grand Hank Productions. Okay. For many, many, many years, he's worked with this. Yeah, Grand Hank Productions. And I'll kind of show you where, where my mindset is with even with the electric universe. I'll just kind of put it out in the atmosphere. Uh-huh. He's a, Grand Hank is a friend of mine. He went to University of Pittsburgh. He's a scientist that started his own 501c3 
where he incorporated music with the science. He had a TV show for many okay. years in Philadelphia. Where I was his, I was his, uh, I was his um, lab assistant at times. His nephew Marty DJs, and he puts on science shows basically with chemistry and travels the country. And you know, cool. it's the idea of having the music with the science, kids will listen. Period. Yeah. I mean, no matter uh-huh. what culture you come from, it doesn't matter. He puts on these, you know, shows and TV shows, and it's still basic. Well, at the time, it, I'm going to say basic, but yeah, Hank had me doing experiments with him, and I'm like, this is what 11th graders are doing now. You know what I'm saying? The chemistry. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. Like, okay. And it's in the 90s. We're talking about like 98. Like, I'm like, okay, uh, no problem, buddy. Uh, you know, but nonetheless, it's still trying to get your point across, you know, even though we're on advanced levels and kind of break it back down and then incorporate the music with it. So I incorporate music in everything I do. And I just plugged it because Hank is a prime example. We want to teach science literacy and it started in the urban core, but it is spread throughout the United States. It, it, it works that way. Kids will get, become involved. Um, we're not kind of reaching as hard and the model works. Uh, Hank, uh-huh. I actually contacted him about the experiment that was just, uh, the water properties. Electric water properties. It was uh, just on uh, Thunderbolts. Dr. Gerald Pollock. Uh, yeah, but then the actual experiment, the paper that came from uh, the paper with the electric properties with the experiments. We just uh, did, you guys just did a Small video. A video just for a water for state properties. of water. Uh, depending on oh, okay. potential. So I'm like, okay, you have a paper that was written and uh, Bagshaw did, I think, did a uh, uh, couple videos about it. I'm like, you know, Hank, look, man, we got some, we got a door open. Let's do this experiment. Now, his lab isn't set up here in Philly, though it will be because he's traveling. I'm like, let's test this. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's like he's a chemist. Easy. Easy play to where it's, hey, if something's out there, like a paper, you guys put the paper out there. I took the paper and called him on the phone. Like, here's the paper. Let's look at this. And, you know, what? the reason why I want it tested doesn't matter. Let's test it anyway. You know, let's uh-huh. test this. You test everything else. Let's test this. And then we're getting into the conversation about plasma. And, uh, you know, and I'm going to just take it from there. And it's not with me trying to sell him on Electric Universe at all, really, at this point. Um, right. But, right. To, you know, he does this for a living. And that's great. You know, this is what then if you're going to put out information in videos as alternatives to religion, whatever, what have you, people can do that. That's fine. But then have somebody backing you up. that's credible. Um, that. Is pushing a uh, science literacy agenda to where is it? It isn't fake science. We're gonna I'm gonna call it just straight out with you guys. You guys know what I'm talking about, though. Mm-hmm. Where we do need experimental analogs. We do have to have some sort of proof rather than somebody looking at something telling you what it is. I mean, come on. I, I tell kids this all the time. Since I was a young kid, I was born in '69. There's never been a hydrogen and helium. Uh, never been able to sustain that, man. It, it was a test before. So if you're going to teach me this in the 70s and 80s, well, that's not what the sun is, guys. Real simple answer. We can't sustain a, a, a hydrogen right. helium reaction longer than a split second, if you will. Then that's not what yeah, the sun exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, uh, yeah. I mean, at that point as a child, I was like, oh, well, that's not what the sun is. If you try to test it. So if we can get kids to think that way, because Neil just is talking about a kid that really is looking up to him and he's writing papers, et cetera. Well, we have to kind of be responsible then. And, uh, Break it back down to a basic level because we're already, we're already on this advanced level. I said most people in my circles will look at this stuff and be like, "What are they talking about?" You know? Yes, I'm sure uh, a few people would look at this and go, "I have no idea what they're what on are about. They talking about." But that's, I mean, there's fundamental things that that, that are that are like sure. just blaring, and the the one that I find is our our electric our electrical model does not map to our biological electrical model, and therefore therefore it's missing pieces. You know, I mean, it's it's that simple. It's that quick a statement. Well, and it's also it also doesn't help that to obscure just just uh, uh, I'm sure that you guys could all agree that sometime in our lives, the were the, the class that was called civics suddenly became social studies and that we completely lost the ability to interact as, you know, citizens, you know, like we we lost the idea of how things are supposed to work. Uh, well, the same thing has happened in science in a way to obfuscate the idea that there is that that they could possibly be challenged. They simply do not teach the scientific method. They teach systems of belief 
in a model. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it, there's a revolution. I mean, it's a revolutionary idea where where we're relooking at it. We're, we're we're taking the we're we're being bold and we're we're, we're taking the leap of we're, let's readdress the stuff that we've been taught. We're, it's the same place you're at, Sean. We're doing the same thing. Right. right. And uh, I also like to plug. I'm a book guy too, so I. Because I, I have a record collection, you know, at least twenty, twenty-five thousand pieces of vinyl. I'm estimating. Wow. I've been DJing it long. Oh, I have a lot of vinyl, man. And that's, that's a lot of vinyl. vinyl. So, <laughs> that's a lot. I have, a vinyl, and I have a cousin named Lorenzo who was collecting books, and you know, he has a really nice library. And you know, I was obviously building a library over the years, but I also support and promote hard copy books, man. Like, let, let's get these hard copy books. I mean, I sent Wallace Thornhill a personal picture when he his facebook was unlocked after the concert or during the conference last year he usually doesn't have his facebook where you can they send him a friend's request so i sent him a picture hey man look <laughs> you are god sent i have these books thanks you know what i mean and then boom he became my friend and, and i joined the group i think i'd already joined the group before but like hey i get the books man i don't even play around i get the hard copy books and like to have it in my hands where i can feel it touch it it's kind of the same thing like a record you know if that mm-hmm. makes sense so mm-hmm. i do promote that also as a poor yeah, man, reading. I have to deal with PDFs most of the time, but I guarantee you, I yeah, picked tough, up that Thunderbolts tough. of the Gods and the uh, Electric Sky for sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the exact one I was yeah. talking about right there. The ones, the uh, nebulas I was referring to that you can only see where it starts getting loaded, but you can't see as soon as it, you know, it just disappears into a force free aligned current. Yep. Very stunning. Anyway, sorry for interrupting. No problem. I just, uh, I was, en- I'm enjoying this whole other aspect to the EU and scientific outreach, which I never considered. I often, uh, right. uh, uh, what you were saying there, Sean, uh, mm-hmm. I often use Feynman. Uh, his, he does this whole thing, the essence of science in 60 seconds. Uh, and it's basically he, him just going, first we take a guess. And then we make a hypothesis and then we compare our hypothesis to the guest using or compare to nature. And then we compute the differences and then we see if it's right, right or wrong. If it's wrong, it's if it doesn't match, it's wrong, period. And I love the way he just said it It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how smart you were, how many people love you. It doesn't matter if it doesn't agree with experiment. It's wrong. And this is what I was arguing with my friend. With regards to geology, my my friend who does the, the problem is that so many things that so many things that we're taught and 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 are given as you know just just pure fact are are not based on that you know I mean it's a, yeah. like for instance Jim Jim brings up like you know distances to stars we we give the, we're, we're given this as as pure fact and and if you look at the method of measurement it's it it there's no accuracy in it you know. And, 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 and the, the fudge factor on this is massive. Yes. You know, they, I mean, they, they're, they're finding, they're finding a difference of five times the distance just recently with, with the closest stars. Now, you know? number and, one, I was going to say, okay, that's amazing. But there was, there, there's, because we can, with the closest stars, you can use parallax, uh, because the, uh, even then you get, you get a very small angle. Of course. No, but so, with, so you, with recently yeah. our machines have got to the point where we can actually calculate stuff like that, as opposed to before where we would have to do it by literally by eyeball, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, well, I, the, you know, and the, so, six months apart where you do it from, you know, the 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 the, 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 the Earth at the different positions, you know, that that's your parallax. Oh yes, points. definitely. Yeah. But what I meant was is that they they and and obviously that's that's great, but. Uh, it's the same thing as they were saying before. Things that, like the the holes in the armor of the Big Bang, so to speak, or the conventional, we'll just call it conventional or whatever theory, uh, uh, is what the armor was being chipped away uh, in the 1980s and 1990s. It was pretty getting really really shaky. But now it's it's almost laughable that they're holding on to certain things because they've they falsify themselves with almost right. every observation, which, which is well, why, this, of course, they're right. surprised all the time because they can't make right. a prediction. <laughs> if, you, if your model has no predictive accuracy, throw it away. 
Right. <laughs> well, that, that, that's where the, that's where this is kind of becoming a movement, and it's basically take you know, take take the take the fat take the, the this house of cards down before before anything else gets built because it's it's a major hindrance to uh, to to true science finding well, the truth. A lot of times, I think, in and this is just my opinion, perhaps that uh, well, actually, I don't think it's my opinion. I think it's very clear. If do you ever watch the movie Pie? Anyone watch that black yes. and white movie? Really kind of kooky about mathematics mm-hmm. and computers yeah. and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, in that he says, at, at the beginning of every time he tries to run a test, he says, restate my assumptions. Blah, 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 blah. Therefore, blah, 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 blah. So this is his stating of assumptions. They don't do that anymore at all. There's there's no, like, uh, you know, assuming speed of light is yeah. constant, assuming we know what causes gravity, assuming... You know, and because we don't, you know, we're 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 at a loss for a lot of these things. Right. Uh, we've we've lost the connection. Of what I, I think with, and that's why throwing, I don't like to say it this way, but throwing shade at at mathematicians who have become deified for their ability to understand or even read complex equations that even a well-educated man like myself would have trouble going through. Uh, especially when you add variables that have no basis in reality. Why is this variable here? Oh, that's just something that we noticed that we needed to make the math work. So this is an epicycle, you know, just like in the Ptolemy days, you know, you just add another another circle upon a circle upon a circle till you get the till you match the the actual rotation of the planet. You know, that's that's not really science then, because you're you have variables that you can't account for, you know, that type of thing. Right. Anyway, sorry for. And we're still doing it. We're still doing. It. Yes, and I, I, want, I don't want to fall into that trap myself. I want to, you know, that's why I got. You got to keep yourself in a keep it, an open mind about what is truly real, actually. You know. <laughs> right. But uh, you, yeah, this this video, the Rupert Sheldrake video, was banned by TED by the you know the TED talks, which are you know pretty. Pretty you know, popular, etc. But he he went on there. There's he's got a, a book. Uh, it's called the Science Delusion. It was it was it, he kind of modeled it after uh, uh, Richard Dawkins' uh, the God God Delusion. But but Rupert Sheldrake went went the went the exact opposite direction and went back at at the, R- Richard Dawkins with the Science Delusion. And his his narrative he takes ten foundational points of physics and you know just our general general science knowledge and ba- and basically shows that it's a house of cards and he does it he does it with with just an immense amount of uh grace and uh, uh, uh poise it's, it's poise <laughs> it's just amazing so if if, if, if you want to get the if you want to get the wrap down like just listen to this it's about it's it's about 20 minutes but ultimately you can, you can condense it into five minutes and and it's just you'll blow anyone out of the water with it i actually recommend uh, he did. He did science set free uh, at EU twenty thirteen, I think, and it's a two parter. So Rupert Sheldrake was on for an entire hour, and he goes over this exact. It's basically the same thing as his TED talk, except mm-hmm. he gets to go over those ten points. He he he, he really in gets detail. To, yeah, and there's another one where he gets to do that as well because oh because that's why he said in the in the TED talk one he said I only can go over a few of these because I only have twenty some odd minutes so blah, but uh, it, when you get into the into science set free the actual video or I think it might be called the science delusion I don't know that one that he would be somewhere else and the ones from the uh, Electric Universe the Thunderbolts project EU 2013, 2014, or whatever it was uh, was. Uh, well, it's it's it was very good ammunition to show the the fact that people just try to cover up mistakes, so you'll never see them again. And why? Why would you try to hide science? You automatically well, are no longer a, doing science. It's almost offensive. It's a power structure in a religion and a, and a, you know authoritarian uh, uh, apparatus. Could. It's a priesthood, yeah. it, it, and it's a priesthood pretending not to be a priesthood, which is mm. very bad. It's disturbing, yeah. especially when they don't realize it. Like, and but this is why I don't uh, that that DJ friend of yours, Sean, um, whose name right. escapes me at the moment, DJ Hank. I think you've been said it. Yeah, Grandmaster. 
yeah. he he is. Uh, uh, this is why the same thing is. I do not bash. I would not bash people like him. I would not bash people like uh, uh, Bill Nye, and I try not to bash people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, even though I think they're wrong. And some people have this really big hard on to hate these, you know, especially in the EU. They they like to be. It's a right. They're, they're doing the tribalism uh-huh. thing. They're doing the tribalism thing a little bit, you know, like right. they're, they're right. they think that you know there's a fight on, but in actuality. Um, I'm sure that Bill believes everything he's saying. I'm sure that Neil deGrasse Tyson believes everything he's saying. Uh, right. th- these people are. You're, you're sure. I'm not. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Just, uh, we, we also Ooh. have debates. So. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, there's a conspiracy idea. I can, I can go with that. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, sure. but, but I, at least mo- let's just say most people who are trying to uh, promote science are doing it from the good of their heart and thinking that you got to mm-hmm. you want to raise people who are uh, intelligent and uh, inquisitive and creative and thought you know thoughtful uh, and uh, are not easily swayed by the next good rhetorical speaker out there you know who just has a fancy bag of tricks believe in me and thou shall be rich believe in me and you know I can solve all your problems believe in me and you're smart that's you know, it just pre- it is in a way it just plays to the ego. Sometimes, if you're, you know, like I, I'm, like people like what, what's his name there. As much as David Icky or Ike or whatever might be talking about uh, a little bit about the Saturnian theory and a little bit about the EU, and they're they're not that's not their game though. Their game is to sell books or whatever, you know. Right, right. So yeah, very cool. I rolled on through that one. Sorry. <laughs> hey, there's a yeah. sparkling current right there from the top. Yeah, oh, you want to see? You want to see? This was this was fascinating. Let me, let me La Yeah, yeah. This this, this guy, Paul LaFoley, just amazing. But he's a, a, a visionary artist, but but uh, very very interesting. T- it touches on a lot of the things we discuss. But, you know, and then and then there's always the the uh, the ability to. Kind of say, okay, these are really interesting ideas, and, and entertain them, and 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 have them as as far as as far as inquiries that you know a, a statement of a possibility should be supported, you know, and it's just just the the the, the amount of ire that things can be brought up whenever anything's declarative can be a real big problem, but it's like yeah, the what ifs, the what the what ifs. The, the what ifs and and may, and how about looking at it this way? How about looking at it that way? How about looking at it this way? Really important, you know. And 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 to shut that down is is uh, something at least I try to avoid, you know. Well, here, I mean, technically, you know, I mean, you guys are introducing me to a whole other aspect to, um, you know, the idea of harmonies within the solar system and things like that. I honestly was not something that really you know popped into my mind as much i mean i knew that yeah. they were there but to and but it, but this you know shell it's, it's, it's about a, that too the form yeah and it, right. the, the, the well the, tes- tesla obviously you know, it's as a cornerstone piece of teslas right uh, you know they think think of everything as, as in terms of, of, of frequency in the wave okay yes okay. yes that that is that, true he did say that uh, I, I was going to say I'm not sure if, if uh, you're right on that, but I guess I'm wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? It's, well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's I mean, but he has a he had a beautiful mind. Like he's he reminds me of uh, uh, like I, I they were they said about him that he had the ability to just see something in his mind prior to actually even building it. You know, like he would just, he would just be constructing. He wouldn't have blueprints or something because he would, he would know, he would, it would be in his head, so to speak. The art, the art of visual, the art of visualization. Yes. All, all the time. You know. And uh, especially using an abstract concept. Now, this is very interesting. There is a, there is a definite necessity for abstract thinking when it comes to electro, anyone who's an electrical engineer will tell you that uh, what we work with we can't see i mean almost in no ways can we can we see a voltage can we can we see a current it's all in our heads 
you, you, I mean, when but it's you, a visualization of it. You know. True, of course, but that yeah. there's an. But what I meant was is that that's completely inside of your. There, there's nothing is there's until computers were invented, we couldn't even see this idea. You know, like it wasn't something that we could. Uh, we it was all in our heads, literally oh, all in our heads. In the fact, that, but we knew it did something because you know batteries work, machines work, lights lit, you know, type of thing, and adding Tesla's. Uh, uh, frequencies into it, uh, which is something that James Clerk, Clerk Maxwell never had to deal with. Um, uh, obviously, was a, I mean introduced a whole new ball game to the to the to the science, and hmm. uh, and I was just going to say that I would I would I think that I have a good visualization imagination, so to speak. But I've been told that uh, well, I mean, just reading what he said. What he said that he could do, like from his own words, you, uh -huh. you're, you're, I, I, I understand what a genius is, you know, and I, uh, I'm, an, I'm an impassioned amateur, you know, he, in comparison yeah. to someone of that stature, and I try, but of course, this also leads to people worshiping him, just like they worshiped Einstein. I, and I, I don't like the, I don't like the, ter the term, the term genius is, is it, it actually shuts shuts people down from Fair exploring. Enough. Fair enough. I, I I don't want to. I should. It's like a, it's a deification much, of types. Yeah. So I mean that's the you know. So. But I mean that's where the illustrators back then were so crucial. You know, I mean it's, this is this is why Schauberger was so strong because he was he was ultimately, you know, the, the uh, in, in bottom line he was a great illustrator. You know, and uh, even even at, like Lichtenberg they were doing these back in the 1700s. You know, here's here's the anode cathode. That's thing, you know, and, 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 and look at look at and he drew them, and it's, but but look, you know, ultimately we're still fighting this one. You know, there's 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 a lot of information here <laughs> that that I as an electrical engineer I didn't get in school. Yeah, it's like it's like what's going on with what's going on with the geometry here? What's going on with the action? Why hexagon. are there rings around? Why are there rings around this one? Why is there a hexagon? Why does this one have all these sprouts going out of it? It's like I didn't get that in school. Why not? That right there. This is known the way, in the 1700s. This, when we were talking. Yeah, well, obviously, mm -hmm. this is what I mean. That's what I mean by awesome. But when when Billy Elverton was showing his thing, and he works with AC, uh, alternating current, and there's certain patterns that are made. Uh, this is why when I was I was mentioning with like uh, uh, to Garrett Hill uh, when we were at the conference, I was like, "Can you make it like ano anodic or cathodic in different directions?" With like two hundred thousand volts, it goes. Uh, yeah, we can go up to three hundred thousand or five hundred thousand volts in with DC or a DC or AC or something like that. And I was like, "Holy God!" Mm -hmm. You know, like that's because this is this is why the this is why the landscape it changes depending on whether or not you have a flow going in or out with the ions going in or out uh, type of thing. Right. Right. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, this is the, the this is the, the the work and the excitement, and now it's just it's it's getting it out to to people to to see that this is this is happening. And it's a, it's an alternate view, you know. It's just amazing. What's his last name? Billy with Overt. L uh, Y E L V T B E Y E L L. D E R. There he is. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. There, that one. That's that's actually a one thirty nine. It's a perfect length of time. Yeah. Very short. Yeah. What beautiful. Is... Let's make a mesa. Yeah. That's just that's just energy. No 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 fan going there. Yeah, that's just that's just ions moving and saying, uh, "Land, you're coming with me." Okay. Do I have a choice? Not really. <laughs> and we see these in the scablands. Remember when I said that, oh yeah, it would look like it was crawling across the landscape? This is what I meant. You know, when I said that they would, you know, you see the geology and it would be moving yeah. almost sometimes. Well, like it was yeah. like crawling. Well, this is, and this right. is what I mean. Things are being picked up from one point and dropped on another point. If you get my meaning? So that you're going to have whatever was living there at the time during this hit would have been 
blown to pieces, ripped into little tiny chunks and deposited in several different places and it would have moved on. And they would have said, oh yeah, it was deposited over millions and millions of these years by water. Right, <laughs> right. I love the electricity coming at the side. I mean, this is this is where you, where, where you look at you know the, the discharge event for for all all, the, all those geological things that you were bringing up, Sean, and then the stuff that we've yeah. looked at in the Southwest. It's really clear that it's it, it, it's not it's not water erosion, right? no, yeah, or, nor nor uh, nor like impact. You know, it's the whole that, that, that that's the other one that they've they put forever with the meteors coming down. It's like you just get a big charge. You're going to get the, the you're going to get these geometries, and the beauty is they happen at all different scales. You know, so. Right, right. As at the same time, guys, can you hear my granddaughter in the background? I'm just saying it and put it on the show. I can hear my granddaughter from my man cave. Uh, yeah, my grandchild. Oh, okay. Cave. Oh, nice. Don't I worry. hear. Oh, okay. I can hear her, here, and I'm like, I wonder if she can. Be got, she's either laughing <laughs> she gets, or she wants a bottle. Somebody oh, okay. She gets, she get on the show here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> awesome. Four months. But there you go. Oh, oh well, congratulations. Cool. There you go. Thanks. It was just such a shock when I heard what he said, uh, or what was said there when you were just coming in and just saying it, uh, you know, well, you know, this, this is about the electric universe. And he was, it was just the, it was just the level of, Dislike the the host, however, was being polite. He was like, "Well, you just get a paper to us, and that's going to be cool." But this other Which guy, I didn't well, it was very nice of him actually, because it was at least he was yeah. you know being open, and that's the best way to be. I mean, if I have someone right. who's contradicting me, I try to you know give them something like, "Well, it's fine, show me something, and I'll see if I you know I don't want to ignore you." But there's there's some uh, there's some Billy Albertons all over the place right there. Yeah. Is Robert <laughs> Robert still on? Robert, are you still on? Maybe not. Yeah, I got. I lost you for a second there. I was trying to get back on. Oh, oh no good. problem. Yeah, hey, you want you, you want to you just share a little bit about the Upheaval Dome? Oh yeah, where, well, where were we here? I'm just like I said. I just, just yeah, we were just talking about e, you know EU geology, geology and and like uh, uh, Sean was sharing you know some of what he saw with the geology in Pennsylvania, but uh, we all know how. It, how you've been the, the the life life work that you have now with uh, upheaval dome and, and the obsession stone you might want to I don't know if you want to if you want to go into sharing some of that with him. Oh, all hand. right. <laughs> the current theory about it: if you go there, there's a placard that actually, if you uh, if you can zoom in, you can find the road that leads into it, and then you can hike up there. Um, there's a placard at the rim. It tells you there's two uh, current theories about how this uh, formation had occurred. One was that it was a salt dome that it completely uh, uh, collapsed and eroded away, which would have been the largest of its size. And I think the second theory was that it was an impact. And uh, I actually worked with a little bit of uh, with Gene Shoemaker prior to his death, whenever we uh, discovered this rock that was a, a devitrified form of analcine. And if you notice here, this is basically sandstone, primarily in the strata. At least the first 400, you know, feet down, just uh, the, through the vertical cliff of the, the rim here. But anyways, getting back to this, Gene actually had this upheaval dome was his pet project ever since uh, the discovery of the uh, Shoemaker Levy Nine comet. He always wanted to prove that this was an impact, so he had come up here at the behest of Dr. Cassidy from in Pittsburgh, at the University of Pittsburgh, there where we were living at the time, and uh, we had ventured out here just to work with to get this rock off the ground. And uh, Gene Shoemaker came all the way up from Flagstaff and basically, you know, did a field test on it. Thought that it was a calcite because it was pretty soft when you scratch it with your knife. We've already been over this, but for the people that have never heard it, it's a basically the the rocket itself is basically a fused balls of this now seam that are just touching at one contact point, and it also has a filamentary uh, app, uh, phenomena in it between too. It's, uh, I don't know if they're like glass hairs, but or just filaments of some other kind. We haven't had them analyzed yet. But there, it's, it's really an, an intricate, intricate structure. But it's real weird because you try to cut through it. It's a, it's a really hard substance. It wears out your diamond blade really fast, and that's why we're having difficulty getting this processed and out on the on the market because of funding and you know materials and everything. But uh, getting back to the subject of the dome here, you can see that the the this is why Gene actually thinks that it's an impact. But uh, if you can see here, the rim is actually about 
uh, 350 to 400 uh, feet through solid sandstone, and it's damn near vertical when you get to it. It doesn't. This picture really doesn't do it justice. But uh, Neil and I have been to the rim edge there, and it's it's, it's a pretty straight drop off. Yeah, and, uh, and the wind will take you right off the end. <laughs> right. And, uh, normally, when you have an impact like that, it would dish out, and, and if they even they even put that in the reports, that's why it's like a. a a theory they have never really proved that it's actually but they're kind of leaning towards now that it is an impact uh if you like go to the state rangers and you know go to the state capital and ask them about that but with the electrical theory we're actually thinking that it's probably just like a blister effect like uh, from the uh, primary arc blast that was a uh, you know blasting out probably the grand canyon area in the entire southern western united states and this was just like a focused area where it just kept uh, zapping for a while and caused like a blister and uh, that's kind of like we think from that intense, you know, um, zapping and pulled out a lot of that uh, sandstone and threw it out, you know, about what, 25 miles away, I think it is from where our mine is, that uh, it just and it just deposited it there. And it just it actually changed to a devitrified form of a, a now seam. And it didn't really get the crystal, uh, crystallized really uh, like it normally does because it landed in the wet Morrison formation at the time. So like like a shock cold and that's why it looks the way it does now. That's what we're. That's what our theory is, at least. You know. Well, it's clearly, re- but the thing is, the dome is clearly part of the landscape, and th- this is the right. thing: you can't separate one thing into just. I mean, not seeing, not seeing the obvious connection. I mean, they must have came across something like this when they first got airplanes and went, "Holy God!" You know, like look at this. Look at how this right. land looks. I mean, th- this is the, the when we were just talking about uh, one of the most. I mean, astrophysics is one area where people can make assumptions and say, well, you can't prove me wrong uh, because, you know, it's so far away, you know, and we'll never be able to do it until we can actually build a black hole. So, you you know, blah, 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 you can't prove me wrong. And geology is another one. It's, it's more like, it's more of a descriptive science, an interpretive science. It's, uh, right. You're, without experiments... You know, they're basically trying to put on the air of respectability, like a real science, like like physics is physics and electrical engineering is electrical engineering and so on and so forth. And, and you know, chemistry is chemistry. You know, you can prove or disprove in the lab. And if it doesn't work, you know. But with uh, they just go, oh, yeah, just give me one free miracle. Give me millions and millions of years and I will, you know, or give me uh, a one explosion at the beginning of time. Whatever the argument is, you know, give me the myth and I will, or give me the magic and I'll create the, uh, and I'll create whatever I need. Yeah. This is, uh, I'll make the show. I'll make the show. Right. And, but, you know, we got to understand that both of those sciences were started in literally in what, the Victorian era? Uh-huh. You know, like, yeah. I mean, really. And that's when their theories became hammered down and they've never really given a crap. Uh, after that, I mean, they, they haven't really uh, tried to update from there. No matter how much people are going, oh, we're seeing charged particles. Oh, we're seeing this. Oh, we're see-. Well, we don't need to study charged particles. That would be silly. We'll use computers. They'll tell us what we need to know. We'll use models like that as opposed to actually going and doing it. And those are two areas where the science, uh, plasma physics, uh, and of course, you know, basically electrically zapping landscapes, anyone who's worked with welding you know, can recognize a lot of these patterns. You know. Yeah. yeah. Sean, I don't know, have you ever seen this, the, the, the Reichat structure? Say it one more time. It's the Reichat structure. It's it's in uh, Mauritania. Yeah. yeah, this I mean as far as far as like uh, uh, electrical events that, that I, I I've this is this is like this is like my fa- my favorite geological uh uh, uh the, the geometry that I've run across because it because it shows v- vorticity so directly, you know. Yeah. But it's didn't off, this off have and, a different name at one time? The Eye of the Sahara. I know the that the, was like a really obscure name, maybe possibly foreign, because I think uh, in my letter from Doctor Cassidy, whenever he sent it back to me on the samples that they got back from the Smithsonian, mm-hmm. they mentioned Mauritania, but they actually uh, it was uh, shit. I can't have to find the letter here. If I can find it, I'll pull it up. I, yeah, I, I mean, think this this shows this 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 to me is like is like the, you, you, you got to take this as like a, a major event 
you know. The one thing I liked about this more than most other things is that when someone says, oh, no, 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 this is just an uplift and worn down over time. That's what my friend said when I, of course, oh. that's what he does, right? And I was like, it's it's not, it's a spiral, buddy. Look. Yeah. You know, and that's and, one of the and, things. And, and, and look at this, the scale, the scale of it is jaw dropping. Look at the scale of that thing. This is, it's just massive. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Phew. Okay, here, I found a letter. Could you imagine See. all the stuff? I mean, the one... Th- oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Robert. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Let's see here. This is the letter I got from Cassidy here from uh, oh, okay. University of Pittsburgh. Let's see here in the letterhead here. Just on, I think it's the beginning of the second paragraph. It's like, in our experience, the specimen is different from other impact glasses such as those associated. And this is the let word I was talking about. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like the, the whatever crater in Mauritania. That's why I'm thinking that's why they call it. Oh, the maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so much easier to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what they do. <laughs> what names do change occasionally? Uh, they do. Yeah. It, but they're very they're very similar in structure. Yeah. Yeah. This is also dated '96, so yeah. this is uh, this is just a, like when you when you see some of this uh, some of this work and you realize like when we're going back to what Sean was saying about the um, um, I don't know how to word it correctly because it's so like not in my vernacular um, the um, I don't want to say black nobility or the so the, the conscious movement. Uh, the, yeah, conscious. Yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry, I'm trying not to be insulting because uh, I don't That's, really understand it. So, uh, well, I mean, I understand it, but you know, especially after seeing you know what you know Black Panther come out, you're like, yeah, that you should have a lot more of that. He's I, Canadian. Yeah, I'm Canadian. Maybe stuck in New Brunswick. Stuck in New Brunswick. But, They're too polite um, up there to deal with that. <laughs> but you're, uh, but the. Uh, the nature of it, uh, I was thinking about all the cultures through Africa that would have been could, like that we can see through the sand because w- one of the things that is lucky that we can't do with stone, really, what we can do with sand is even if we're through a mile of sand, sand can be t- can be sort of uh, tuned out of a radar wave because if it's dry, if it's wet, you know all bets are off. But if it's dry you can shoot right through it and see the ground below. And they, you know, where they see these, these, these camel trails, they see, they can see campfires, like, you know, places where campfires were and little, and little villages and everything, all through the desert, underneath the sand. And, I mean, there's a mile and a half of sand in some places. Now, this is, this, when you look at the American Southwest, or, well, actually, American General, maybe even both Americas, maybe other parts of the world, who knows, uh, like the Bosnian periods got buried under, like, what, 40 or 50 feet or meters of dirt. The pyramids, or the, the North America has apparently places like Rockwell, Texas, you know, and stuff like that, where it's completely buried. But besides that, there's no evidence, because we can't, we can't see through the ground nearly as easily. Um, right, right. And I, I've always felt that if we could somehow because i'm not sure if there is a map of you know what the i mean eventually i'm sure someone would go here's what the south africa here's what africa looks like without sand on top and you'd be like holy crap there's like you know 1500 cities down there you know like i'm sure that we'll find stuff like that out you know and uh and hopefully not do what the what they did to you know Great Zimbabwe, when instead of sending archaeologists, they just basically sent a bunch of plunderers to go to steal, you know, and steal everything. It's like, yeah, well, we don't have to care about this. They weren't a great culture anyway. They were just ancient Zimbabweans, you know, and I was so friggin' English. I guess in that one, it was the, it was, right, it was think, the turn uh, of the last century. They just, the archaeology was just getting started, but still. I mean, come on, the idea of archaeology back then, Napoleon would walk over and shoot cannons at, you know, ancient monuments for fun. (laughs) I mean, catastrophism that seems to be ignored overall because, you know, 
I think even in that video that, that uh, you guys posted, uh, the guy did make a comment uh, that it, it, it sounded like he was referring to the Neolithic uh, subfluvial period. The Sahara is green, and he made it maybe a reference to seventy thousand years ago, and that's what starts. You know, we're right back in the same rabbit hole, geological ages, and then no cause and effect as to why, except for maybe a mundane answer. Well, you know, the tectonic plate shifted. Okay, fine. How did that happen? Then? What caused it to happen then? If that's what you're going to go with. Yeah. So, you know, it's just dating and, and just how we've been, you know, taught through the slow walk. I call it the uniformitarianism slow walk that, right. you know, that's what starts. I call it the rabbit hole. You're in the rabbit hole in the quagmire to where that scientific answer may not provide, you know, the evidence that you need, but it sounds good. Okay. Something happened, but they don't you know, like there's desert right there. Well, it's, you know, it's, you know, it causes cognitive dissonance, you know, and then, and then it's, you know, so, and then it's just, well, I need to pass the test. That's it. You know, well, and then, and then I never want to see it again. You know, say, you know, those, it, if you put this in context, if you could imagine that, that we actually got a chance, like they go, they go and map, so let's say the Sahara and they look underneath and you see all these, all these, uh, uh, you know, cities or something. And they finally go and they dig down to one imagine that they could or whatever they get down there and they start looking through the artifacts and they realize that these artifacts are not that old you know or they're from cultures we already know like uh, there's a bunch of egyptian artifacts in there you know you know implying that the egyptians somehow traveled from where they were to the middle of sahara before a mile of dirt got put on top of it you know and that's right. that's uh th that type of hey let's change the timeline is so incredibly frowned upon. Like they, they think the books are written. We don't want to rewrite them. You know, we're, we're sure whether we're right. And this goes into the catastrophe versus uniformitarianism mantra. Right. Then, I mean, even years ago, I was doing some research and I you know, came across some information and, you know, there, there were, I think the, the Cosian people, uh, drawing in, in basically sand, uh, some of their symbols, which, would you know be Venus? Uh, when I did some more research, and I'm like, you know, the symbols look the same; they're consistent with, you know, different symbols we're seeing all over the place. So, right, it goes right back down to the rabbit hole. But you have to been at that level of research to look at the symbols they were drawing in dirt, not so much listening to. Well, yeah, listening to what the person that presented it is while it presented in the paper, right? Or what they were saying, but then to be able to try to connect it, like, yeah, something pretty terrible happened, guys. I mean, they're saying some stuff. Now they're celebrating it, even if those ones are celebrate, but then it's like, the headdress is the stick man on stone. I mean, I go to that all the time, like, look, guys, we can say what we want to say and have a bunch of different theories. Here's Peratt's paper. Let's look at what he did, try to get a fundamental idea of, of what was going on and look at what he's saying in, is in the laboratory versus even, uh, Dr. Tron, it's stabilities uh, on petroglyphs, but let's look at the stick man. The stick man's on the Dogon's headdress, but it's everywhere. So it's on the tiki right there, mask. Yeah, I make the, the argument. Of why did everybody tiki. draw on these on these rocks? I mean, it kind of blows the out of back of the very out of the water anyway, because there's petroglyphs everywhere, man. I mean, that means people walked, drew the stuff, were telling people what to draw. See, so, you now it's not going to make sense. It's going to start making less and less common sense. It's there. This stuff is isolated. On every habitable continent, and then just so happens the Dogons are dancing around with the same symbol on their headdress, mm -hmm. and they have strange stories, no different than uh, Australian Aborigines have strange stories, right? And you know, trying to put them in context, then we have to weed through, you know, ufology and just other conundrums and rabbit holes, and still try to look at science models at the same time. I don't think people are doing it that way, though. You feel me? Like they're looking at information and guessing and trying to come upon conclusions without really you know, trying to, you know, apply some common sense almost. People are saying this stuff happened. Then now there has to be a cause and effect of what happened. And right. maybe conventional dating and just ideas don't really work once you really try to break it down. And then that's what, you know, in the, the what black conscious circles will just call them. That's what starts a, you know, the deeper argument. And I've, like I said, I've been beta testing this stuff for a while. And people will cherry pick me and start talking about neutrinos or just, whatever else and it's like you know i know what you're doing i know what you're reading from but you know i'm gonna kind of box you in do you even know you yeah you have to know right. their arguments you can go you, you can go to the fundamentals 
Right. Yeah, you have to be. I have to box a person in almost. I mean, yeah. I, I made a meme of myself. I took a Luke Skywalker's right. picture from the Last Jedi when he was taking off his his, his cape, and you see the robot on. I put my face on it. Like, guys, look, <laughs> just slow down because I'm telling you, you got. You just I've done a lot of research. It's more important for me to share how I got there. But if you want to go there, we can go there. I'm just going to box you in and hold you there. Until you at least look at the other side or other possible explanations for uh, natural occurrences that we're having trouble explaining through religious text and you know standard science. Slow down, you know what I mean. Right. Just stop right there and just you know we're going to backtrack a little bit and see if we can make sense of this stuff. But again, you know we're talking about emotions, feelings. Um, yeah, always, always. You know, and yep. and then it comes back to Chattel slavery and just. That idea, and you know, I try to deal with that as best I can. Um, we can look at, you know, missing parts of history. I think uh, Julian just put up a nice uh, on a Mr. History, you know, talking about just doing some comparative research and, hey, guys, something's wrong here. Let's look at the Bronze Age. My goodness. People were tripping. So I like to just simplify and say, well, Velikovsky's pretty much saying in a nice way, why is everybody so crazy? <laughs> I want to <laughs> explain to you guys why everybody's so daggone crazy across the board and where it comes from. And that's, you know, again, we're going to open this rabbit hole up, but we're going to uh, go with someone who's a, you know, trained uh, psychoanalyst who was very well-rounded. And let's just look because we already see it. Come on, man. We see destruction in all these stories. Yeah. There's creation in this story. There's a destruction story. Yep. There's peculiar things going on in the sky. You know, let's talk about it with an open mind and that's when like i said it gets in the sticky territory it's in real sticky territory real quick but we see right. lightning every day and we see you know you see the auroras and things of that nature it's like okay let's still look at the planet let's look what we have in front of our face let's do it it's, that it's, way i like what you yeah. guys are doing that it's how you hone the how, how okay. you hone the narrative we're pretty we're pretty loose loosey-goosey and and, and 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 chaotic chaotic but as far as presenting it to an audience the thing that's coming through to me is like we got all this material and that that's so compelling that it can be put together in a really like engaging and convincing presentation given given the right. you know the right focus and 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 care and and what the intention is right. So, right and i think that's coming that's coming down the pike here so i hope it's not like copernicus where would it take him 300 years to get in the books i call it i mean oh uh-huh yeah, well, or, or, or 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 Galileo. Yeah, Galileo, <laughs> Galileo definitely <laughs> had the rougher time. Uh, who's 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 the other who's the other one that really got it bad? Or, uh, oh, man, they, they, yeah. they, you know, there's a part part of it. Yeah, there's there's potential for martyrdom. <laughs> yeah, like oh boy, here we go. Well, yeah, that's and, that's uh, where you go with uh, yeah. that's Bruno? Why people like yeah. uh, like in modern times you still have them. Velikovsky, Haltenar, you know. Right. Uh, um, uh, what was his name? Eric Lathwaite. Tons That's of Brad got it. Well, well, yeah, but they couldn't get rid of him. That's the only yeah. thing. They're like, we want to fire you, but you know, you help build crazy military stuff. So sure, you can continue. You've never been wrong. So yeah, Schauberger, definitely. Yeah, he was definitely. Uh, Marcus was smart though. He was like, I have this great idea for the Earth going or the Earth going around the sun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to die and I'm going to give this book to you and then you can publish it. That's what he did. He basically waited until he, <laughs> right. he died first. Like that's that's how he avoids punishment. You know, he's like neener neener neener. You can't put me in jail. <laughs> you can't burn me at the stake. You know, and that's that was, amazing. That was a good I mean, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, this is the, the to talk about all this the moral authority of like these power structures, and it's like it's like the thing that they do is they crush this inquiry quickly, and 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 with the eye with with this veneer that oh we're supporting all this open inquiry. And this is the immense hypocrisy. Well, I think every single, uh, well. The exact same story we just talked about there with Galileo, or the exact same story we talked about with Halton Art and Velikovsky, is the same story that uh, exists with um, uh, Robert's father and the church. The uh, he 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 had a question. He said, "What's going on here?" And well, it can't be this. It has to be this. There's a contradiction in here. Um, okay, you can just screw off and die now. That's basically what they said to him. <laughs> you know, that was it. Yeah. The, the, you, there's no, you know. Well, they also threatened his life and everything. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I didn't know that part. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Over over words in a book. 
But this is the this is the power of uh, you know whenever there's a a, a tribe and there's there's well, a, it wasn't a, the words in, sorry it wasn't the words in the book it was the uh, the arguments that would start because half the church believed one way half the church believed the other way and they would literally argue in the classes in in the sacrament meetings and you know whatever meetings they could have of uh, home teachings that they had at the time. You know, and it just and then they would always look at him like he started this. So like, and it was like, no, I just wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so. and, and and this is the thing, but there's a there is a. I mean, what Sean said was correct. Uh, exactly. You have to. You also have to. This it's a terrible problem of not knowing your audience or not knowing what you're up against. Uh, luckily, I've had a wa- I've watched a lot of people trip and fall. Uh, through not understanding, even Robert Schacht talked about it. He was talking to that uh, about the Egyptologist who he had a he had a gotcha question he was going to get him with, and then Robert said, "I answered the question because I already knew what he was going to say, and I I was very convincing in my argument." And he just he just before I was even done explaining, he just turned around and walked away because he thought he had me, and I already had an answer, and but they don't. They don't care about truth. They care about their own jobs and their own tenure and being right. And yeah, that sucks because we don't we don't need. I mean, I I mean, most of these people here are just. I, I think what was it on the Universe Cosmology Quest video? I think it was uh, Gary Salentic who said it best. He was like uh, he was like, we're all just scientists here, aren't we? And I was so naive. I was just out of graduate school. I didn't think I could get in trouble with hanging around with Halton Art, but you know there are real pressures that will come down on you, <laughs> you know, and uh, you real you learn that the hard way. It's not it's not not everyone's out for uh, the truth. They're out for something else. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, fame, glory, something. I don't know. Money, authority, uh, authority. Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, I like to interject it. What, what I was doing and what I was trying to set the guy up, I was really trying to set him up. And I've been trying to set him up for a while. But if we really want to talk about um, what happened in the past and origin of races and tribes, etc., another piece of evidence I put on the table with synchrotron radiation in that paper that Dr. Pratt wrote is a hair follicle from an African person or an African-American person. Our hair grows a little different. They're in little tight spiral curls and if we shave with a razor we'll get razor bumps because the hairs are trying to break through your skin and they're naturally trying to curl well let's put that on the table and talk about synchrotron radiation and look at our hair buddy and i'm being real serious like look at look at our hair follicles which has been talked about before look how uh, look i didn't the know electrical they were discharge pattern and that's really and that's really kind of slow down again dr pratt did you know when i've heard him even say about this you know happening on the planet, then some people's DNA should bear the marks and scars, I like to say, within the nucleus of our you know, DNA cells, if you will, uh, this same thing we're talking about. We see the patterns, and we can see the patterns even in, again, hair follicles, something real simple. Look, look at how the hair follicle is shaped. The helical. Curl. And it, that's when people stop, like, oh, I don't want to talk about this. Well, taking pop shots at other people, you really want to talk, you really want to go there? So then I'll stop, you know, and you guys can kind of see where I'm going with this, where it actually becomes that serious. It sure it does. Mm-hmm. It sure it does. Yeah. If these things happen, it absolutely sure it does. Oh my goodness, you know, like, okay. Yeah. You guys can't be serious. Like, this is serious. And uh, well, I wonder what Buddy would like to say, because he has the Doherty set and it, like kind of ties that into biology and the helical and vortices and that would almost tie into the, the uh, kinkiness of black hair, you know. Yeah, it's like, come on, man. Like, it's if, if synchrotron, you know, radiation had bombarded our planet, go figure that. Now we can really sit down and talk and have an unbiased conversation then about epigenetics and how that works and the studies we have with even the white worms. I like going to that, you know, heat and cold. Let's Instead of natural selection, you know, you have polar bears and you have black bears. Let's yeah. really make this thing easy for people, but maybe mm-hmm. they're not ready to open the door yet. That's a door you, I don't know if people want to open right now but i'm bringing it up of course i'm going to bring it up because some of the yeah. esoteric schools taught about aether um and listed them as noble gases in a book by a very controversial leader named dr malachi york he's probably the most controversial of the 
Afrocentric schools, we'll call them, where he's, he's, he's doing a prison term in Fedamax. You have to read his backstory, but he put out a lot of information in it. He had a book called The Holy Tablets, which was written in about 97, where he essentially, being keeping it real, copied Zachariah Sitchin's works, put it in a book, claimed to be a conformist, but had one edition where it was just the myths and another edition, which was the science. And he's right from the very beginning of this book that's probably worth about 400 bucks now, 500 bucks. He mentions the noble gases. I'm like, stop right there. He mentions them, but he talks about quarks and biaps in the same, you know, light. And it's like, if I, I read this stuff and was like, wait a minute, these noble gases are the most powerful gases in existence. And then he starts talking like in an esoteric type of way about nine ether being strongest, you know, six ether being weaker. And then he talks about hair follicles. And I'm like, oh, well, now I can see where you can, you know, contrive a mystery system within itself. Based on factual information, and this is like ninety seven. Yeah. So I'm like, the capability of contriving is very yeah. So ninety without there. revealing sources either, no sources. But yeah. in an esoteric book of you know hundreds and hundreds of pages, where did you get this in your one of your opening statements about these noble gases? And that was a little contrived because he had a negative chart, like he would put the helium atomic weight and have it in a negative scale, like he'd have a positive exponent, a negative exponent. It was like, okay, I don't know what you're doing here with this, but. I see what you're getting at, but then it's repackaging information and kind of presenting it for sale, if that makes sense. And you'll never have an answer that way. 